This is the 2021 U.S. Citizenship Test, 100 random civics questions with the easiest answers. My name is Jim Hacking. I'm an immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. Uh, we have prepared this video of the 100 naturalization questions for our clients, and we decided to share it with the whole world to help as many people as possible become U.S. citizens. You know, here at Hacking Immigration Law, LLC, it is our mission to help 10,000 people become citizens by um, the end of 2030. So we have some work to do, um, and we're really excited to be here with you today. I have literally been to hundreds of naturalization interviews. I have gone over each of the 100 questions, and I've come up with what I think are the easiest answers for people taking the test, we're going to go through all 100 questions, and I hope you get a lot of value out of this. I think that if you practice this uh, test and watch this video three or four times, you should be in a great position to have your naturalization exam go very well. We wish you the best of luck, so let's get right to it. And just so you know, I've gone through and we've randomized all the questions. There are 100 questions you will be asked up to 10 of them. You only have to get six right. So once you get six right out of the 10, the test will stop and then you'll do the English portion and the writing portion. But this video is focused on the questions themselves. We're gonna go through each question and um, I hope that you find it valuable. You know, you can rewind it and you can do the subtitles down below if you think that will help. Um, but for now, we're gonna get into the questions. I'll probably take a break every 20 or 30 questions or so just to pop back on screen and to let you know what we're thinking. All right, so without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so question number 34, who vetoes bills? Who vetoes bills? The president, the president vetoes bills. Question number 37, what does the judicial branch do? What does the judicial branch do? And there are four answers, possible answers here. And the best thing to think about this, because we're going to talk about the separation of powers and checks and balances. But the best thing to think about here is review laws. The courts reviews the law. They review laws. All right. So that's what the judicial branch does. It reviews laws. All right, let's go to the next one. Question number 50, name one right only for United States citizens. Question number 50, name one right only for United States citizens. Answer, voting, voting in a federal election, voting in a federal election. Question number 10, what is freedom of religion? What is freedom of religion? The freedom of religion is that you can practice any religion or not practice a religion. You can practice any religion or not practice religion. This is a question that does come up from time to time, so you have to be ready for that one. Name your U.S. representative. This is question number 23. Name your U.S. representative. And for this one, you're going to have to go to this website. We'll put it, the link down in the show notes uh, for the YouTube video. You're going to have to go to the House website. You put in your zip code and it will tell you who your representative is. So there are 435 representatives across the country. And in order to find out yours, you're going to have to go to this website, www.house.gov slash representative slash find your representative. All right, so we'll on to the next one. Question number 66, when was the constitution written? When was the constitution written? 1787, 1787. And the way that I remember this is one plus seven is eight, and then minus one is seven. So 1787, there's two sevens in there, one, seven, eight, seven. It's a little bit tricky, but you just have to know that one because that is one that comes up for sure. What are two rights, question number 51, what are two rights of everyone living in the United States? What are two rights of everyone living in the United States? And there are six freedoms here, and I think the easiest way to do it is to think of the First Amendment, because this actually comes up in another question. If you learn this, you'll actually have it um, ready for two 
uh, different questions, and that is speech and religion, speech and religion. So when you get the question, what are two rights of everyone living in the United States? Speech and religion, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Question number 74, name one problem that led to the Civil War. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Easiest answer here is slavery. There are some other answers, but those are hard to remember and they're they're not very accurate. So I would just go with slavery, slavery. Question number six, what is one right or freedom from the First Amendment? What is one right or freedom for the First Amendment? See, I told you this question was going to come up again. And again, you can just do speech or religion, speech or religion. Those other ones are interesting rights, but they're hard to remember. So I would just go with speech or religion. Question number 92, name one state that borders Canada. Name one state that borders Canada. Best answer, New York. Now there are tons of answers here. It looks like there's about 12 answers and you can pick any one of these, but New York is gonna come up a lot in these answers. So I want you to think about New York often. If if you're stuck for an answer and you, you don't know, I would just throw out New York. You've got a pretty good chance of it being right. So let's go with New York. New York borders Canada. New York borders Canada. Who is the father of our country? Question number 69. Who is the father of our country? Answer, George Washington. George Washington. Or you can just say Washington. You know, uh, I love watching Jeopardy with my kids and you usually get the points for just coming up with the right last name. So with this one, you could just say Washington. Question number 73, name the U.S. war between the North and the South. Now, we already talked about this one. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. That's the Civil War. You could say the war between the states, but the Civil War is easier. The Civil War. All right. Question number 61, why did the colonists fight the British? Why did the colonists fight the British? Of course, the colonists are the people who came to the United States and set up colonies in the eastern part of the United States, the colonists. Why did they fight the British? And there are several answers here. Because of high taxes, because the British Army was staying in their houses, because they didn't have self-government. The answer that I usually see and hear and that gets approved is just high taxes. Everyone hates to pay taxes, so just remember that. So why did the colonists fight the British? High taxes, high taxes. What are, question number 55, what are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy? What are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy? Vote, run for office. Vote, run for office. There are a lot of other answers, but these both involve elections, and elections you'll see come up throughout the test. So I would stick to voting and run for office. That means try to be a candidate. Vote run for office. Question number 68. What is one thing Benjamin Franklin is famous for? What is one thing Benjamin Franklin is famous for? Now this one was hard. I didn't like any of these answers. They're all sort of hard. I've never heard this question asked. Um, and so I would go with started the first free libraries. Most people know what the bibliotheque or the library is. So I would go with started the first free libraries. You could say first postmaster or oldest member of the Constitutional Convention, but I would just go with started the first free libraries. Question number 20, who is one of your state's U.S. Senators now? Who is one of your state's U.S. Senators now? And this is another one of those ones where you're gonna have to go find the answer. You have to go to www.senate.gov backslash senators backslash senators contact. Each state has two senators. That'll be a question that comes up later. You know that. Um, but um, because this video is going to be viewed by people around the country, you're going to have to look up your own senator. And I would say just try to memorize the easier name. Question number 24. Who does a U.S. senator represent? Who does a U.S. Senator represent? Answer, all the people of the state. All the people of the state. Question number 15, 
who is in charge of the executive branch? Who is in charge of the executive branch? Answer, the president. The president is in charge of the executive branch. Remember, there's three branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial. The head of the executive branch is the president. Question number 19. We elect a U.S. senator for how many years? We elect a U.S. senator for how many years? Answer, six. Answer, six. So you'll see, you'll see in um, these questions about um, the length of time that people are um, serving office. And the easy way to remember it is the representatives, there's lots of those. So they short, they serve a very short amount of times. Representatives, two years, president, four years, and senators, six years. So that's the way to remember it. Representatives, two, president, four, uh, senators, six. And remember, senator starts with S, six starts with S. So I think that's your best bet for that one. All right. So let's keep going. Question number 87, name one American tribe in the United States. Name one American tribe in the United States. Now this one, you only have to know one. So you might just go with Cherokee, which is the easiest one to remember, one of the biggest tribes of all. But I was thinking that some of the answers, oops, sorry about that. Some of the answers um, like Blackfeet and Crow, those might be things that are easier to remember. So you can, you know, pick any one of these. I might go with Cherokee, but I think Blackfeet and Crow are the easiest ones to remember. Blackfeet or Crow, you just need one of those. All right, question number 97. Why, why does the flag have 50 stars? Why does the flag have 50 stars? Answer, because there are 50 states. 50 stars, 50 states. 50 stars, 58, 50 states. And remember, there's 13 stripes on the flag, and those are for the 13 colonies. So stars, states, stars, states. And the way, the way to remember that is stars and states both start with S-T-A. S-T-A states, S-T-A stars. Question number 81. Who did the United States fight in World War II? Who did the United States fight in World War II? I don't remember this question ever being asked, but if it is, I think you have to name all three. Um, I thought you might just have to name one. I'm not real sure about that, actually. I've heard it go both ways. Somebody that just naturalized the other day did all three, but then I've heard people just say Germany. So Japan, Germany, Germany and Italy. Japan, Germany, and Italy. Question number 32. Who is the commander-in-chief of the military? Who is the commander-in-chief of the military? The president. The president is the commander-in-chief. And there's old President Obama uh, shaking hands with the United States Marine Corps um, representative. So there he is getting ready to go on Air Force One. The president is the commander-in-chief. Question number 39. How many justices are there on the U.S. Supreme Court? How many justices are there on the Supreme Court? The usual answer is nine. So you need to pay attention if there's been a vacancy or if somebody has passed away, there might only be eight. So you have to check the Supreme Court's website. But the answer is usually nine. Question number 12. What is the rule of law? What is the rule of law? And there are four answers that you can use. The one I like is no one is above the law. No one is above the law. So we saw um, Presidents Clinton and Trump get impeached. And that was because not even the president is above the law. So that's how I remember it. No one, even the president, is above the law. Question number 98. What is the name of the national anthem? What is the name of the national anthem? Answer, the Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner. They do ask this one sometimes, so you might want to know this one. Question number 30. If the president can no longer serve, who becomes president? If the president can no longer serve, who becomes president? Answer, the vice president. The vice president. Question 36. What are two cabinet-level positions? And there are many cabinet-level positions, and I go with the easiest ones. I picked Vice President and Secretary of State. 
If any of you have been through the consular process or dealt with embassies, you know that's run by the Secretary of State. So that's an easy one to remember. And then the Vice President. So the Cabinet are the people who advise the President. They give the President advice. So all these different heads of departments, they all advise the President. And of course, we always know the Vice President advises the President. That's why they pick the Vice President to be their friend and their advisor. So that's one right there. Then if you just think of the Secretary of State, you should be good to go. But any of these will work. But I just think Vice President is the easiest. And then Secretary of State, you need to. Question number 28. What is the name of the President of the United States now? What is the name of the President of the United States now? Answer, Joe Biden. Biden. Joe Biden. You could just say Biden and you'll get it. Question 48. There are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. There are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. And the easiest answer is any citizen can vote. Any citizen can vote. The other ones are sort of older amendments. They might confuse you. So just remember, any citizen can vote. Question number 70. Who was the first president? Who was the first president? Answer, George Washington. George Washington or just Washington. Question number 41. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the federal government. What is one power of the federal government? What is one power of the federal government? To print money, to declare war, to create an army, or to make treaties. I think to print money is easiest to remember because when you're at immigration, you'll probably have money in your pocket, and that's a good way to remember it, that the federal government is the one that printed this money, not the states. So we all use the same money in all 50 states. So it's the federal government's right and responsibility to print money. Question number 26. We elect a president for how many years? We elect a president for how many years? Now remember, we talked about the way to remember this, and of course, presidents are elected for four years. Four years for a president. Question number 90. What ocean is on the east coast of the United States? What ocean is on the east coast of the United States? The Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. Question number 93, name one state that borders Mexico. Name one state that borders Mexico. I picked California because everybody knows California, but you can also go with California, Arizona, New Mexico, or Texas. Any of those will work. Um, whatever you think is easier, I thought California. Question number 72, name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. You could say the War of 1812, that's sort of easy to remember, but again, the Civil War comes up so often in these, I would just go with Civil War. So in the 1800s, it's the Civil War. We were fighting ourselves. And then in the 1900s, it's World War II. We'll get to that one in a little bit. But just remember, first we fought ourselves, then we fought the, the world. All right, question number 40. Who is the Chief Justice of the United States right now? Who is the Chief Justice of the United States now? This is also one you're going to need to check. But right now, it's John Roberts, and he's been the Chief Justice for many years. And assuming he stays healthy, he will continue. So the answer to the question, who is the Chief Justice of the United States now? John Roberts, or just Roberts. Question number 100. Name two national U.S. holidays. Name two national U.S. holidays. Answer, easiest answers, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Just think November and December, Thanksgiving and Christmas. You can go with any of these, but Thanksgiving and Christmas are the easiest. Question number three. The, the idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. What are these words? The idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. What are these words? We the people. We the people. Question number 29. What is the name of the Vice President of the United States now? What is the name of the Vice President of the United States now? Answer, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. She's our Vice President, our first female Vice President. Question 58. What is one reason colonists came to America? What is one reason colonists came to America? Religious freedom. Religious freedom. You could just say freedom, but I think religious freedom is easier to remember. Um, religious freedom. They weren't being able to practice the religion that they wanted to in England, so they came to America. 
Question number 14. And we talked about this one before. What stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? What stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? Checks and balances. Checks and balances. Remember, we have three branches, the legislative, the judicial, and the executive, and they all check and balance each other. Checks and balances. Question number 18. How many U.S. senators are there? How many U.S. senators are there? Answer, 100. 100. 100 U.S. Senators. Question 27. In what, in what month do we vote for president? In what month do we vote for president? November. Americans vote for president in November every four years. Question number seven. How many amendments do the, does the Constitution have? How many amendments does the Constitution have? This is a hard one. I don't think I've ever heard it asked. Maybe just one time. Answer, 30, uh, 27. Answer, 27. There are all the amendments. You don't need to memorize all of them. But you do need to know the first one. And you need to know that there are 27. Question 94. What is the capital of the United States? What is the capital of the United States? Answer, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. So many of you know that we have our offices. Our main office is in St. Louis. And then we open up an office in San Diego. And now we have an office in Washington, D.C. It's actually right around the corner from the Capitol. So just think Jim has his office in Washington, D.C. That's where the Capitol is. Capitol is in Washington, D.C. And that's where the hacking law practice has their office. All right. Let's get to the next slide. What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? That's the Louisiana Territory, the Louisiana Purchase, or just Louisiana. President Thomas Jefferson bought um, the Louisiana Purchase, which included St. Louis, where I live. So just remember, St. Louis, Louisiana. All right. Question number 13. Name one branch or part of the government. Name one branch or part of the government. Now, we've talked about this one, um, and we've talked about how the... Um, Checks and balances system keeps each branch from taking too much power. And that's one branch. The way to remember it is legislative, executive, or judicial, or Congress, president, or the court. So I would just say president. The president is one of the branches of government. That's the easiest way to remember that one. Question 38. What is the highest court in the United States? What is the highest court in the United States? Answer, the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. Question 16, who makes federal laws? Who makes federal laws? Congress. Congress. So we've just talked about the president and the Supreme Court and the Congress. Those are the three branches. So Congress writes the laws. Question 82, before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? Before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? Answer, World War II. He was a great general. And then he became president after Harry Truman in the 1950s. So World War II, Dwight Eisenhower. Name one U.S. territory. Name one U.S. territory. I've never had this question asked, but if you had to answer, I would say Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Question 67. The Federalist Papers supported the passage of the U.S. Constitution. Name one of the writers. The Federalist Papers supported the passage of the U.S. Constitution. Name one of the writers. Answer, Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. And in the old days, I might have said James Madison, but because Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical has become so popular, everyone knows Alexander Hamilton. So I would go with Hamilton. Question 96. Why does the flag have 13 stripes? We talked about this earlier. Why does the flag have 13 stripes? Because of the 13 original colonies. The 13 original colonies. Question 62. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Answer, Jefferson. Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Question 46. What is the political party of the president now? What is the political party of the president now? Democratic, the Democratic Party. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are Democrats. 
Question number eight, what did the Declaration of Independence do? What did the Declaration of Independence do? Answer, declared our independence. Declared our independence from Great Britain. It, you could just say declared our independence. Keep it simple. That one does come up. Question 57, when must all men register for the selective service? When must all men register for the selective service? Now this one, there's a clue in your form in your N-400 because it says, did you register between 18 and 26? 18 and 26, but really you just have to know 18. So when I turned 18, I had to register for selective service. And if you're in the United States in some kind of valid status, um, after you turn 18 and you're a male, you need to register for selective service. Question 47, what is the name of the Speaker of the House of Representatives now? What is the name of the Speaker of the House of Representatives now? Answer, Pelosi, Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi. Question 80, who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? Who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt. Now, not Theodore Roosevelt, but just say Roosevelt or Franklin Roosevelt. He was a president for four terms. Question 44, what is the capital of your state? What is the capital of your state? So your answers are gonna be different here. It depends on what state you're in. Of course, if you're in DC or a territory, you don't have a state capital, but generally uh, the 50 states all have capitals and you need to know your state capital. You can look that up on the Google. Question 85, what did Martin Luther King Jr. do? What did Martin Luther King Jr. do? Now, sometimes people will say freed the slaves, and that's, that's a mistake. And so the way that I remember it is Abraham Lincoln, he freed the slaves, and we'll get to that question later. But Abraham Lincoln has two words, so two words come before three words. Martin Luther King tried to overcome and fight for civil rights, civil rights, and he was 100 years later. So think Lincoln freed the slaves, and then Martin Luther King had to fight for basic civil rights, in the 1960s, 50s and 60s. So civil rights, Martin Luther King, civil rights. Question 33, who signs bills to become laws? Who signs bills to become laws? Answer, the president, the president. Question 17, what are the two parts of the U.S. Congress? What are the two parts of the U.S. Congress? The Senate and the House, or the House and the Senate. The House of Representatives and the Senate. Question 84, what movement tried to end racial discrimination? What movement tried to end racial discrimination? Now we just talked about this one, the civil rights movement, Dr. Martin Luther King, civil rights movement. Question 11, what is the economic system in the United States? What is the economic system in the United States? Capitalist economy, capitalist economy. I've never had this question asked, never heard it once. I was actually surprised that it was in here when I was working on the slides. Question 64, there were 13 original states, name three. There were 13 original states or colonies, name three. The way that I remember it is the news, the, the states that start with new, New Hampshire, New York, New Jersey. Remember I told you New York was gonna be on here a lot? New York, New Hampshire, New Jersey. You can try other ways, maybe the Carolinas, or New York, New York and North and South Carolina, that would be a good way to remember it. You need to have some kind of hack or way to remember these things. And um, I like to have the three news, New Hampshire, New York, New Jersey. All right, question 83, during the Cold War, oh, I jumped the shark there. During the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? Question 83, during the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? Answer, communism, communism. Question 25, why do some states have more representatives than other states? Why do some states have more representatives than other states? Because they have more people, more people. So you can see the dark blue states here have the most people, so they have the most representatives. Smaller population states like Wyoming have very few, or I think just one. So the number of representatives you have depends on how many people live in your state. Question 21, the House of Representatives has how many voting members? The House of Representatives has how many voting members? Answer, 435, 435. I have heard that question asked, so you gotta be ready for that one. 
That's one you just have to memorize, 435. How old do citizens have to be to vote for president? How old do citizens have to be to vote for president? Answer, 18 and older. 18 and older. So remember, 18 is sort of when you're considered an adult when it comes to the federal government. So if you're a male, that's when you have to register for selective service. And if you want to vote, you have to be 18. Question 35. What does the president's cabinet do? What does the president's cabinet do? They advise the president. The cabinet advises the president. Remember, we talked about that earlier with the picture from President Obama sitting around the um, table with all of his cabinet heads. Question number one, what is the supreme law of the land? What is the supreme law of the land? Answer, the Constitution. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And remember, it starts with we the people. We talked about that earlier. Question number 79, who was president during World War I? Who was president during World War I? And the answer is Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. And the easy way to remember this is World War I, two W's, two W's, Woodrow Wilson. So Woodrow Wilson goes with World War I. And there were two presidents during World War II, Truman and Roosevelt. That one doesn't even come up. So if you get the question, who was president during World War I, just remember WW, Woodrow Wilson, or just Wilson. Question 95, where is the Statue of Liberty? Where is the Statue of Liberty? Answer, New York. Remember I told you New York would come up? New York. You could also say New Jersey or near New York City, but New York's the easiest answer. Question 77, what did Susan B. Anthony do? What did Susan B. Anthony do? She fought for women's rights. So Martin Luther King fought for civil rights and Susan B. Anthony fought for civil rights for women. So I would say, I think it's easier just to remember women's rights. You could just say civil rights for both, but I would go with women's rights. Question 76, what did the Emancipation Proclamation do? The Emancipation Proclamation, that's a tough two words. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? Freed the slaves, freed the slaves. And that was Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves with the Emancipation Proclamation. All right, question number four, what is an amendment? What is an amendment? A change to the Constitution. A change to the Constitution. Remember we talked about all the amendments to the Constitution? Amendment is a change to the Constitution. So it was written originally, remember we talked in 1787, and then it's been amended over the years. Question 88, name one of the two longest rivers in the United States. Name one of the two longest rivers in the United States. The Missouri or the Mississippi? The Missouri or the Mississippi? I'd go with Mississippi. It's a funny word. It's a Native American word. M I crooked letter crooked letter I crooked letter crooked letter I humpback humpback I. That's how I always remembered Mississippi. M I S S I S S I P P I Mississippi. Mississippi River is the longest river in the United States, so I'd go with that. Question sixty five. What happened at the Constitutional Convention? What happened at the Constitutional Convention? Answer: The Constitution was written. They had a convention at the con and they called it the Constitutional Convention. And guess what they did at the Constitutional Convention? They wrote a constitution. There's your answer. The constitution was written. Question 89. What ocean is on the west coast of the United States? What ocean is on the west coast of the United States? Answer, Pacific. Pacific Ocean. Question number 78. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. Now remember, in the 1800s, we fought ourselves, the Civil War. In the 1900s, we fought everybody, World War II or World War I. We had a lot of wars in the 1900s. World War II is probably the easiest one to remember. What are the two major political parties in the United States? What are the two major political parties in the United States? Democratic, oops, sorry, Democratic and Republican. Democratic and Republican. All right. Question 53, what is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? What is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? Answer, to be loyal, be loyal to the United States, to give up loyalty to your other country, but be loyal to the United States. You need to know this anyway, in case they ask you to explain the oath. So giving up your loyalty to your old country and being loyal to your new country, be loyal to the United States. Question 52, what do we show loyalty to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? What do we show loyalty to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? You could say the United States or the flag, the flag. Now, most likely 
this officer is going to have a flag in their office. And that's a good time for you to look around the room. So you're going to have an opportunity to answer the question. And remember, you don't have to you don't have to give the answer right away. You can pause for a minute and look around and think. And when you think, remember the flag. The flag is going to be somewhere in that office. And that should help you um, in answering that question. All right, let's go to the next one. What is question 49? What is one responsibility that is only for United States citizens? What is one responsibility that is only for United States citizens? Voting. Voting in a federal election, that's the easiest one. So remember that, vote in a federal election, vote. Voting comes up a lot in this test. So if you're stuck, you might want to just throw out voting um, if it makes sense. All right, under our Constitution, question 42, some powers belong to the states. What is one power of the states? What is one power of the states? Remember, the one power of the federal, one power of the federal government is printing money. And for the states, it's giving out driver's license. That's the easiest one. Schooling is good. Police and fire is good. But driver's license, you'll have one in your pocket. It's probably sitting on the officer's desk right in front of you. So remember, the state gave you your driver's license. We don't have federal driver's licenses. Question two, what does the Constitution do? What does the Constitution do? Sets up the government. Sets up the government or defines the government. Sets up the government. Question nine, what are two rights in the Declaration of Independence? What are two rights in the Declaration of Independence? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So I would just remember life and liberty. We'll start with L, life, liberty. Question 43, who's the governor of your state now? Who is the governor of your state now? So again, the answers will vary. The District of Columbia does not have a governor. Um, the territories don't have governors, so you're going to have to look up who's the governor of your state. And it should be the state where you live, not the state of the office that you're going to visit. Question 56. When is the last day you can send in federal income tax forms? What is the last day you can send in federal income tax forms? Answer, April 15th. April 15th each year. Question 22. We elect a U.S. representative for how many years? We elect a U.S. representative for how many years? Now, remember, we did President 4, Senator 6. So, representative, how many years? Two. Two. A U.S. representative is elected for two years. Question 86. What major event happened on September 11th, 2001 in the United States? What major event happened on September 11th, 2001 in the United States? Answer. The terrorist attack the United States. Terrorists attack the United States. Question five. What do we call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? What do we call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? Answer. The Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights. Question 99. When do we celebrate Independence Day? When do we celebrate Independence Day? July 4th. July 4th, 1776 was the end of the Revolutionary War, and it is our day of independence. Question 60. What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? Africans or people from Africa. Africans. Question 59. Who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? Who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? Answer. Native Americans. Native Americans. Question 31. If both the president and the vice president can no longer serve, who becomes president? Who becomes president? The Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House becomes president if the president and vice president cannot serve. Nancy Pelosi is the current Speaker of the House. We had that question earlier. Question 63. When was the Declaration of Independence adopted? When was the Declaration of Independence adopted? July 4th, 1776. July 4th, 1776. Question 75. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? Answer, freed the slaves. Freed the slaves. Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. And that will do it for all of our questions. We are, we've gotten through all 100 questions. I hope you found this helpful. 
I think I made one mistake, and that mistake was that I said July 4, 1776 is when the the Revolutionary War ended with Great Britain, but in fact, that is when we declared our independence. So sorry about that. Make sure you go back and correct that answer. That's not actually a question on the test, but we hope you found this helpful. Um, we, uh, we have a lot of great videos on our website, uh, on our YouTube channel, answering uh, questions about the whole citizenship process. We have questions about the N-400 itself. And if you have any questions about the immigration process or about, um, or about the naturalization test, feel free to give us a call, 314-961-8200. You can email us at info at hackinglawpractice.com. We have our Facebook group. It's called Immigrant Home, and there's people in there every day talking about immigration matters, including citizenship, trading information that they get before and after their interviews. And then we have our YouTube channel that you should subscribe to um, by clicking on the subscribe button below. And then uh, we have our YouTube live show where we answer immigration questions for free, um, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Fridays. Twice a week, we try to do it. And we hope you found this helpful. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.